Hello and welcome. Over the last year under lockdown, we've all made a new friend. Internet-based entertainment. OTT platforms have come to our rescue all those days and nights when we were forced to stay indoors. OTT or over-the-top media services are streaming media services offered directly to viewers via the internet. You know them as Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hotstar, Voot, etc. Now, Indian content on OTT platforms just boom, flourish like crazy during the pandemic across the country, across age groups, and it has not gone unnoticed by the government and political parties. This week, we saw Amazon Prime apologizing and cutting out scenes from their web series Tandav after direct intervention from the government following police complaints in Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh that alleged that some scenes insulted Hindu gods and goddesses. All of this blurring the line between self-regulation and censorship. It was also the first such intervention by the Information and Broadcasting Ministry since OTT platforms came under its purview in November. Before that, uh, no ministry had direct oversight over them. So whether it's uh, voluntary cuts, these so-called voluntary cuts by Amazon Prime Video's team or an apology to the armed forces by actor Anil Kapoor and Netflix India for quoting, again I'm quoting here, unintentionally hurting sentiments. This is in the film AK versus AK. These incidents have put the spotlight yet again on the fact that the increasingly popular streaming platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hotstar, they're all unregulated by the government. Does Tandav becoming the first web series streaming on a major OTT platform, becoming the first to edit its content, mark the government's entry into the OTT space? And if so, what does this mean for you? the viewer. On the show tonight, we'll have Leela Samson, former chairperson of the Central Board of Film Certification or CBFC. We have Apar Gupta, he's a lawyer and the executive director of the Internet Freedom Foundation. Uh, Karan Thorani, vice president of the Alara Capital, he's an analyst uh, who closely tracks the OTT space. We have Ashantosh Srivastava, Supreme Court lawyer. Geeta Bhatt, a political analyst who uh, uh, supports the government. And Anand Patwardhan, who needs no introduction, India's leading documentary film Maker. So, uh, Apar Gupta, uh, you know, we have at least 15 streaming platforms. This include, like I mentioned, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, uh, Disney, Hotstar. They all actually currently follow a code of self-regulation, right? This is supposed to preempt uh, government censorship. But the intervention in the Tandav case, what is one to read into this? Does this show that the government is unlikely to leave these OTT platforms to act as per their self-regulatory mechanisms going forward? Uh, thank you for opening the debate uh, and inviting me to comment on this. While I do not have an insight into the mind of the government, there have been regular statements which have been attributable to the Information and Broadcast Ministry, whereby it has sought to increase the ambit of its legislative power in terms of looking at any kind of mechanisms which are there similar to cinema exhibition as well as cable broadcast towards OTT platforms such as Amazon hmm. Prime or Netflix. So there is a likelihood this level of intervention will only increase over a period of time with hmm. increased adoption. However, that would be unfortunate given that I think market mechanisms as well as the form of self-regulation and also existing laws. Mm -hmm. uh, what people mm -hmm. do not recognize is that all of these platforms are incorporated entities in India and there are also provisions under the Indian Penal Code and Information Technology Act which are applicable mm -hmm. against them. Okay, so uh, uh, Karan Thorani, if you could come in here, your stand uh, on this issue and you know, um, whether there should be proper legislation that provides for a statutory body to control and some would say censor content, that's an important question. What's your take on it and how would it even work? Because as Apart points out, um, this, you know, I mean, is it futile? The world is flat, shows are made for global audiences. You can ban something or censor something, but you can get a VPN, release it in another country and only some will get affected because others can get Apple TV, for example, if you can, you know, uh, if you can afford it and if you have the ways and means to do so. Right, so I have a very, uh, I have a very varied view over here talking about uh, the regulation part. So I am not in favor of a blanket censorship on OTT because I think that's going to kind of obstruct the growth of OTT. 
and uh, you know the globally the world is moving to digital and uh, uh, my belief is that very strongly india has to has to move to digital and there is no other way out of that uh, but i think some kind of self regulation some kind of interference uh, in some sensitive topics uh, where in the kind of content being showcased uh, uh, you know is not correct in terms of facts uh, mm-hmm. or in the terms of you know having any fake news uh, there could be some interference here and there uh, but i think the censorship is something which is which should not happen ideally for uh, the ott platform because i think uh, the creative ecosystem is very different uh, for a, for an ott versus a television uh, you know you get that uh, you get a freedom to make whatever content you want and i think india's youth is uh, you know very much wanting to watch, watch uh, that kind of content uh, yeah. there is no uh, there is no second thought about it because yeah. if that wouldn't be the case you wouldn't see such kind of high consumption numbers not in india today so that really goes to show that there's, there's a mindset shift here within the uh, indian youth mm. and they are okay to watch such kind of content mm. and i think uh, we should not uh, you know kind of restrict that uh, uh, you know towards uh, getting this kind of services to the youth but is there a mindset shift in our uh, regulators in our governments in our politicians but you, so you're basically saying you do think some regulation is is needed my question really was that is that possible given the medium given the nature of the industry uh, being that where content does flow right in that context is self regulation the best option karan so yeah so self regulation indeed is the best option and as i clearly mentioned uh, because there is so much of freedom uh, you know to make uh, the type of content what you have uh, people are making whatever they wish to there's no doubt about it but sometimes what happens uh, you know when you are in your creative creative mindset for making a certain type of content you know uh, unintentionally you do make some kind of things which probably would hurt someone else's sentiment uh, so when that happens i think that's when uh, the regulatory authorities need to interfere and you know get things corrected mm. so that is the only way i think the interference can happen otherwise beyond that uh, censorship or anything of any kind any kind of more interference on ott i think uh, that is going to be a negative for, you know for so the industry so people are well. making their own content but will that change going forward has what happened uh, with the uh, tandav apologizing agreeing to snip some uh, bits of its show set a precedent let's go across leela samson though uh, ms samson before i take get your take on whether regulation is required or not your reaction first to amazon prime the makers of tandav this week apologizing and cutting out scenes from their show in the face of criticism actually i have been a little busy i haven't uh, been involved in this controversy at all but i don't think anything has changed sir uh, uh, the issue remains the same uh, that there will always be some sections of society as you say uh, who will object to something or the other either in a book or in a film or uh, on television or uh, the issue is uh, uh, you know should the government get involved Uh, and then it becomes censorship or should every individual use their right to say no if i don't want to read jayadev and kalidas who wrote some very sensuous uh, and very beautiful work i have a right to just put the book down are you going to say no to so many part- sections of us uh, mythology if that mythology mm-hmm. was written today would uh, sections of our society object to it yes um, if kajura was built now would sections of our society object yes but can you say no to going to khajura absolutely can you switch right. off the tv if there's a if there's what you consider to have bad content yes so it's now going to come down to the same thing which is every individual has to use their right to say no or yes hmm. to content but before the product gets to the uh, individual is there a role for government there, there is a self regulatory framework that ott channels abide by but is regulation needed at all a little bit you know why, why would you want uh, the government to lay down norms it's almost impossible to do that it's such a it's such a difficult thing uh, to do it, it this is what i'm saying that i don't think i think we're always barking up the same tree about the government interfering we want them to interfere some sections other sections naturally do not want them to interfere <coughs> why are individuals taking responsibility for their choices that's what i'm saying god why is so when you say don't behave with the maturity that uh, that they entitled to well uh, 
the audience has uh, the maturity, you should leave it to them. Uh, lastly, Ms. Samson, you know, several filmmakers and audiences have really shifted to these platforms because of uh, the freedom and the variety of content uh, on offer. But you know, there have also been concerns about some uh, explicit violence, uh, sexual content of some of the offerings on uh, streaming services. Is there a middle path? Tell me one thing. In everyday life in India, for a young girl, uh, has she ever been protected from sexually explicit behavior? It's in everyday life. It's happening everywhere. She's exploited. She's in fear. She lives in fear every day of her life. So uh, in the house and outside, why are we only talking about uh, artistic mediums? Uh, uh, Geeta Bhatt, why are we only talking about artistic mediums? The government is only focusing on artistic mediums, not the reality on the ground. We've had uh, Piyush Goel, Babul Supriya of the BJP, they've all uh, recently openly said that OTT platforms should not have what they're calling unlimited freedom uh, in its content. Why? Why uh, an opposition to this current system when you have self-regulation? Uh, well, uh, you see, as far as, uh, you know, any form of uh, artistic form of expression, whether it is theater, whether it is movie, there have been, you know, time and again, it has happened that uh, as, uh, uh, you know, we just heard uh, Lilaji also speaking that there are certain sections which are going to come and object. For example, I remember, you know, it was in 90, not, it is not just a matter of today, even in 1970s. Uh, you know, when Ali Padamsi was uh, directing uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, that famous play, he actually had to, uh, you know, change the uh, change his uh, you know, his direction of the play and also the poster. And he had to actually first show it to the church authorities before making it public uh, to be watched. And it has happened, you know, in some in some other uh, uh, content also. So time and again, these things have been seen that. Uh, wherever there is an objection from the society, the point is that, you know, the over the top uh, uh, platforms which are available today, they are very popular among the youth and, you know, everyone uses it because it is much cheaper even uh, than direct to home services. However, the kind of content that is being shown that, the, you know, government has time and again been receiving many complaints in terms of that the content is unregulated, it is, uh, you know, sexually explicit, at times it is vulgar, and, you know, the existing, in the existing laws, uh, it is only the METI, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, which had any jurisdiction over the digital media, but that too only in terms of the technical aspect and not in terms of the kind of content that was being shown. But, and since there have been, there, there have been people, people have been feeling offensive about certain content and there have been complaints. So it is not a matter of curbing anyone's freedom, but at but the same Lila time, Samson giving out, redressal, don't watch. redressal to the grievances which are, which have been, you know, which have been raised. Now, as Leela Samson points out, don't watch. You're paying for the service. It's not like, uh, you know, a television channel where everybody in the house has to sit and watch. You can choose what you want to watch. There are separate accounts for kids. There are separate accounts for adults. But uh, you, you talked about the content. Many also say that the content has also gained critical acclaim globally. Unlike the content provided by cinema or television that's regulated by the CBFC, the BCCC, etc., OTT platforms have no regulatory body to control content. Consequently, we see a different product, many say, right? For example, we've seen great cutting edge shows on OTT platforms. Delhi Crime won the Best Drama Series Award at the Emmys. This is the first ever Emmy for an Indian program. Apar Gupta, is, uh, is that likely to change if there's more regulation? Yes, we are putting that tremendously at risk. I think OTT platforms are providing an innovative basis for us not only to cater to audiences domestically here in India, more often than not people who are young, people who do not find cinema uh, formats which are or content which is aimed towards cinema exhibition or television uh, mm. uh, to be entertaining or engaging, not because they are bland in terms of delivery and this vulgarity on OTT platforms. It's because OTT platforms come with this different kind of artistic sensibility, uh, which uh, uh, which comes with that freedom. If you just look at the B triple C's um, self-regulatory code by itself, 
and also the enforcement which has been done on entertainment in uh, mainstream television uh, it leaves very little uh, what people can actually mm-hmm. watch now um, this impacts uh, creators in a way in which there's always a boundary within which they work then and there's always some measure of distance between that boundary to insulate yourself from risk mm-hmm. in fact the minute mm-hmm. lawyers get into the crit- creative decision making process creativity in fact exits the room mm-hmm. which is why ott platforms today it's not about the vulgarity it's about the flexibility which is um which is missing right now in cinema mm. as well mm. as in television broadcast mm. the second point i would just like to quickly make is that what is the objective of the regulation you are looking for is it to cater towards the sentiments of people who are getting offended wouldn't it be simpler for these people to just uh, close a tab or look at some other content which is already there amongst the thousands which is available now on ott yeah. streaming yeah. and finally i would just like to point out that the distinctions while they may be there we are also looking at instances in the pre existing systems of censorship even with cinema only a few uh, months back Uh, we had the entire padmavat controversy that even the most stringent yeah. forms of censorship regulation in fact licensing will not satisfy a mob which is feeling offended mm. and that level of offense the more you feed it the more that hunger grows the more you feed it the more it grows let's go across to anand patwardhan who has uh, felt uh uh been at the receiving end of a lot of this anand patwardhan you spent decades uh, tracking the rise of hindu nationalism uh, i watched uh, your film uh, ram ke naam as a college student and how times have changed now you're forced to hold screenings in secret um two years after premiere premiering at the toronto international film festival your latest film reason remains uh, unreleased in india Uh, I read a quote of yours in the New York Times where you said you want your films to be watched. So, have you thought of OTT platforms? Have have that encouraged you? And have these latest latest moves, you know, discouraged you? Um, I have thought of OTT platforms. They would be perfect for my film, especially the last film called Reason or Vivek. Uh, but unfortunately, the OTT platforms that are in India are all afraid of the government. and they're afraid of showing my films and so even though at the at this moment the ott is not uh, not being curtailed i mean uh, there's no censorship being applied to the ott platform as yet uh, but hmm. already we have an atmosphere of fear uh, in amongst the owners of these platforms where they see content like mine as pro- that uh, that this might create problems for them because they are in a, they understand what is going on in india we are being ruled by a particular ideology that in my view is against the indian constitution is against the spirit of the freedom fighters that brought us freedom which was meant to be an inclusive society it was meant to be a multicultural society and that is not what is being propagated right now so when you make content which reflects the reality in this country it's going to be hard to show it mm. and it is hard to show it and you've been still doing that you've uh, touched all your films touch on inconvenient themes uh, every documentary that you made you've had to approach the court to ensure that it's shown without restrictions right y- your right. wins uh, your films win um, publicly funded awards but uh, efforts are made to limit their viewership what would you say to karan turani who started the show by saying that you can't have um, you know uh, unfettered freedom creative freedom there has to be some regulation yeah but who is the go- who is going to do the regulation if you if you give the regulatory powers to an ideology that itself is very narrow minded very medieval in its outlook then you're in trouble mm. i mean uh you know what would you do uh, if you were in germany in the 1930s would you give the power of that censorship to adolf hitler and his party I'm not saying that we are exactly in the same situation right now but we are headed that way because the government and the the party in power is trying to control every institution. Mm. The OTT platforms is one that they haven't yet controlled so I would fight for its 
independence, uh, even though they don't put me on their platform because they are afraid. But I, at least some content gets in that other people have made. And I think that's right now, that is uh, one of the last spaces left. The internet is one of the last spaces left. The that... internet is one of the last spaces left. Ashutosh Srivastav, then why is India uh, looking for ways to regulate online streaming content? Because uh, the service providers already have to display elements. It says clearly nudity, drugs, sex, violence, etc. It's all there, uh, uh, these descriptors and mechanisms for access control, child locks, so on. All of that is already in place, isn't it? See, uh, according to me, the Constitution of India gives uh, freedom of speech and expression under Article 19.1. But at the same time, our Constitution also restricts and imposes, uh, you know, kind of restrictions under Article 19.2. So obviously, everything has to be uh, regulated as per, you know, our constitutional uh, rights have to be utilized in a proper way. Obviously, there are, uh, there could be, you know, child lock and things like that. But even the children have like accessibility to all these, uh, you know, OTTs, and they are watching things which contains uh, abusive language. There, you know, there are uh, provisions also in law, like Section 295A is there. You know, when there is any religious hurt, you know, if it is hurting the sentiments of re religions, um, that is a punishable thing. But what about the regulation part? If somebody is showing any obscene, then Section 293 is there of IPC. But there has to be some self-regulation. However, recently there is, with no? this government of India, uh, yeah, with recently right the now there of is. India has made certain amendments in allocation of uh, you know businesses uh, rules 1961, whereby it has given uh, some powers to the. Uh, you know, government uh, uh, of, you know, information and broad, uh, broadcasting ministry uh, who can make uh, and, and you can, who can try to regulate uh, these kind of contents. So I think, uh, you know, self-regulation is very much important because mm. unless once the, these kind of, uh, you know... Uh, okay, self-regulation is, is important. Yeah, yeah, yes, but apart because once it is released, now now we see that the problems starting, you know, people are complaining, a lot of violence happening here, there, because some contents have been shown which are not up to the mark or it is it is hurting somebody or somebody's sentiments. So all these things can be stopped. It, all these th uh, things can be, you know, managed. But who uh, decides? As Anna Patwardham points out, who decides what's appropriate, what's inappropriate? We, I'll get to Geeta to uh, end have, uh, end the show with answering that. But apart, you know, ironically, the makers of Tandav actually, in, uh, Anna Patwardham also touched on this. They weren't actually asked by the government to make any cuts, right? They did so on their own because of, I'm guessing, you know, uh, the atmosphere uh, uh, around them. And Let given that fair. there's no regulatory regulation governing them they didn't really have to make these cuts they've done this uh, on yeah. their own so and what happens internationally surely india can't be the only ones regulating online content right the ott industry has yeah. grown internationally globally especially in this uh, pandemic year that's correct that's correct so uh, india is quite a bit of an outlier here uh, because uh, the first thing to notice is that self-regulatory mechanisms are the way to go. There are certain sectoral requirements for all kinds of film shootings. For instance, animal cruelty, etc. Mm. Uh, shooting mm. in public spaces, uh, using um, uh, minors within any kind of film shooting. All of those uh, are industry-specific rules which always attach. They're even attached to OTT platform shootings. Okay, You can't escape them labor regulation standards etc all of them apply so this entire debate uh, which is structured sometimes about a lack of regulation by itself and regulation being some very good thing sometimes it's a byword for censorship and increasing government control the second thing i'd like to point out specifically in the instance of tandav is that quite off the 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 makers made those cuts after fir's was registered Police teams from Uttar Pradesh are dispatched to the house of the director. Okay, and this does seem to be something excessive, right? It seems to be a form of how laws, rather than being reformed, the hate speech law which is being used now, rather than being reformed, it's actually being applied towards a new medium, towards restricting artistic choice and creativity. And if people are getting offended, they're getting offended more and more on a much more regular basis due to political patronage. And I'll be fairly candid here. 
with just one sentence it seems to be on the rise in recent months and years it's not like it's going away even when self regulation or any kind of cinema style censorship will be brought well, we in we have a, we have a comedian who is in yeah. jail for a, a stand up act he was going to make supposedly that yes uh, he never made that joke so i'm just making this point to to illustrate that how even regulation cinema style censorship will not quell a person who seeks offense and invites offense even when none exists all right well thank you all right, for joining right. us on a show where we believe it's important to speak up but also important to listen we're going to leave you with this thought should the government be uh, wrapping out a regulatory framework for streaming platforms bringing in a list of prohibited content no go areas you know and will this constrain creative freedom will it hurt consumer interest will it hurt uh, our choices that we have uh, will our content become more sanitized will it become more mediocre will it become more like what we've seen over the last uh, few decades on general entertainment television channels and if so where does that leave you something to think about tonight bye bye